Okay. So let's move on to something else that's going to raise your blood pressure. Right, Nancy? Right. Um, ooh, this story, you guys, I can't even. Um, this, this was posted in U.S. News and World Report, uh, I believe just yesterday, that uh, a very esteemed leading medical group is offering testing guide, offering testing guidelines for children with autistic behaviors. Uh, Nancy, uh, yes. this is the American Academy of Pediatrics Council on Environmental no, Health. Him. Right, which I had never heard of that group. I didn't know they had an American Academy of Pediatric Council on Environmental Health specifically, but yeah. they have gone on to outline five treatments that they say, um, five tests that should not be done for kids on the autism spectrum. And they're offering this up as a guideline to doctors and to insurance companies to say, mm, we think that having people tested for this is leading to some dangerous thought patterns and to some people taking actions that we don't like. So our recommendation is that you really don't test for these things. I have never in my life heard of anything stupider. I haven't either. And Shannon, I have to be the first to admit that every single one of the, well, I haven't done mold testing, but I've done urine testing, um, heavy metal testing, uh, blood testing. I've done all of these tests with the exception of mold testing. Well, That's and I've got you there because I've done the mold testing. You've done so, the mold testing too. Yeah. Okay. And, and like, so this just ticks me off. Let's go down the list. Okay. Um, and talk about what they're recommending to pediatricians that they sort of be gatekeepers so that when you as a parent go and say, my child is having these issues, I would like to have them tested for this, that the doctors will go, mm, I don't think that's advisable. And, and let's be clear here, that what this is about is the almighty dollar, that insurance companies don't want to pay for this testing and people don't really want to have the results of these tests. Well, as so, a matter of fact, I, I paid out of pocket for all of these tests and insurance yeah. doesn't cover it. Um, interesting, though, that, you know, they're saying not to do the test, whether your insurance covers it or not, um, which, you know, you would think would be left up to the discretion of the parent. And mm -hmm. this is basically um, a big no to biomedical, in my opinion. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And you know what I always say is that when somebody does something like this, you got to ask who's well, whose purse strings is this tied to? Exactly. And, but this has me hopping mad. So okay, you guys, here are the five testing things that they don't want doctors to recommend: testing for metals and minerals. Oh, looky there. Uh, that they don't want any routine testing for metals or minerals uh, because if they're found, there are treatments that could be harmful. Yes, what? I'm sure they're talking about chelation, I'm sure, uh, because the American Academy of Pediatrics has always been against doing chelation. But they um, also cite here that the council referred to certain preservatives used in multi-dose vaccine trials, uh, thimerosal and ethyl mercury, that have been blamed for the increase in autism rates without proof of a causative link. Right. So they referenced that as a way of saying, let's not test for metals or minerals. Right. And for all of these things, they've sort of covered themselves by saying, well, unless there's something really overwhelming, a, a, a reason why you should test for it. But I personally know many people who had their kids tested and discovered that their kids were high in a metal. Now, here they're saying that that... A high, a high number doesn't uh, necessarily imply toxicity and it doesn't define where you had the exposure to it. But why are we saying we don't even want to know? Like what, what kind of a crazy mixed up thing is this? But I continuing know. on, uh, they also know. are advising against hair analysis. Hair analysis, which I did. Did you, did you do hair analysis? We did not do hair analysis. Okay. Um, but they're saying that there's no scientific basis um, that uh, it's showing environmental toxins in children with behavioral or developmental disorders. Now, when you guys did the hair analysis, did you get anything out of it, Nancy? We got an increase, I think, in some metals. 
Okay. And so did you do something wild and crazy as a result of that? Or did you, you know, did you well, do we things? Had also done, we had also done a chelation, cha- uh, a urine test, a chelation challenge. And we did end up doing chelation uh, for a couple of years, in fact, um, based on the results of his test. And I'm really wondering what some of the more, um, you know, prominent biomedical doctors would think of this. It would be interesting to have them on and have them sort of talk about this. Somebody like Jerry Cartzenel, for example. Well, and I got to tell you, I'm a big fan of the website Environmental Working Group, Uh um, where they talk about environmental toxins in our diet and in our world, which this council goes on to say, yeah, we all have exposure to that. It doesn't mean that it's having an effect on your behavior or how you think, which, you know, somebody hold me. <laughs> like, like what? Um, do we really think that the environmental toxins are not having an effect on us and on our children? Is that is that really the party line? Because I'm not participating in that. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of what you put in has an effect on everything. If you drink too much water, it's going to have an effect on you. And by the way, if the water is contaminated, hello, Flint, Michigan, it's going to have a cognitive effect on the children. So, uh, you know, I love, uh, I can't think what his name is, Ken, um, is it Ken Wood from the Environmental Working Group, that he talks about environmental toxins and speaks all over the world about the effect they are having on people and and what we should be concerned about and what we shouldn't. I'm sure that his head is spinning uh, over this today, but let's continue on. So they're not recommending hair analysis. They're not recommending mold testing, which is, and they're saying that unless the patient has already had clear allergy or asthma symptoms that have not been resolved or can be related to asthma and allergy symptoms, that they're not going to go looking for mold. And they certainly aren't going, if someone has symptoms of chronic fatigue, joint um, stiffness, mental or cognitive problems, or affective disorders, that they are not going to uh, recommend testing for that. Uh, Which that, you know, makes my head spin. Um, So you 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 did You did mold testing? Yeah, but here's the thing. We didn't do, what's interesting is that we didn't do mold testing on us, on our blood, or um, what we did was mold testing in our home. And we found that there was mold in our home, and then that was mitigated, and our symptoms went away. So this this whole idea of, um, because we couldn't have gotten uh, a doctor, I I had... um, uh, uh, an immunologist who said to me, you're, sh- you're showing signs of uh, mold and you need to be looking at your home to do that. We didn't do any medical testing for it. I don't think I was aware that there could be, but they say here that there's a skin prick and that there are in vitro tests um, that, that can identify uh, people who are sensitive to molds. Um, but that that doesn't necessarily mean that you have a clinical disease. So uh, just this, like, let's move the, you know, the pieces around the chessboard and not help people is what this sounds like to me. Right. But the next one that uh, came up on the list is urine testing. And they specifically um, advised against ordering a chelation challenge. Now you did that. Tell people what that means. Um, a chelation challenge is when you do a urine test, you send it off to your doctor, and then that urine test reveals the, the uh, evidence of metals. Right. And in particular, uh, this has been used for years to, to show lead poisoning. Yes. Uh, and, and we like, but there are also other kinds of heavy metal poisoning. Can I just point out that a dear friend of mine who is not on the autism spectrum, who is a woman of my age, uh, probably 15 years ago, went through a whole bunch of health crises. They couldn't figure out what it was, couldn't figure out what it was, couldn't figure out what it was. And finally, a doctor did this with her, did the chelation challenge, and they found that her mercury was very high. And they started asking her questions. She had eaten a tuna fish salad sandwich for lunch every day for like 40 years, and her mercury was high. 
Right. And, and they had to take her through a process and she's infinitely healthier now. Uh-huh. Um, so this, but when they say chelation challenge, Nancy, I think all of us go, oh my gosh, it's this. And they cite that this could be dangerous, a chelation challenge. And you're telling me that you, you had to have Wyatt pee into a cup? That I'm telling you that I did this for uh, a number of years when he was. But, but the actual test was just him peeing into the cup. That's correct. That's okay. correct. Yeah. And, and we wouldn't want to do that, folks. No, evidently course, not. And the last one, of course, you mentioned before is the blood test um, to test for certain heavy metals such as lead. Measurements of environmental chemicals in a person's blood or urine should not be used to make clinical decisions, the council said. And also, well, are blood tests used for viral titers? You know, I, yes. I mean, everybody is doing that. I, I understand right now. I, I, this just boggles my mind. Do you remember a couple of years ago when this new group came out with guidelines for pediatricians and said that they should screen less for children to have them be on the autism spectrum? And they were sending that guideline out saying it's not necessary to, to screen for autism? Yes. I, I mean, this is on the level of, I'm like, are you kidding me? Um, it makes me want to spit, but I will say, um, what all the, the action that we all need to take is that you need to be as a parent, you need to be a little bit more up on these kinds of things. And I think that, I think there is an abundance of concern for parents who go off the deep end, um, when they hear something and they, you know, we've covered the stories of people who, um, give their kids bleach enemas and that is dangerous. Obviously, but, certain certain tests are harmful, and I think uh, are evident. You know, it's evident evident that they're harmful. Um, and but these these tests, though, certainly seem to do first do no harm. The the thing that I, doctors are supposedly setting their standards by. There is not a single thing on this list that I have seen that harms a child. Could someone take the information and then go do some crazy therapy? Yes, but that's not a reason to not test. Right. That is just craziness to me. And to me, it sounds like they've got something else that's going on. And that's why they don't want to pay for these things, which is horrible. Um, and I think they're against biomedical treatment. Yeah. Which you got to ask yourself why. Who are they right. protecting? Uh Thanks for watching Autism Live. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.